Hi everybody, welcome back to Movie Related. Well, we just went and saw Stephen Lang in Don't Breathe 2. And it's the sequel to the really good Don't Breathe. We all like that first one. Let's check out if it's worth seeing part two. All right, Don't Breathe 2. It takes same character. Same neighborhood. Stephen Lang is back. This time, it seems, he has a daughter. Direct, I, I, I was kind of curious about this one and see, okay, well, what else did these directors and writers do? Well, apparently, they did Don't Breathe. Oh, that's <laughs> and and that's about it. Uh, one of the writers also worked on The Girl in the Spider's Web. And other than that, it's been a couple TV shows. Mm -hmm. So not a lot of... Well, I think Don't Breathe was one of those... Uh, Caught low, on. Low money things that just went fire. Yeah. You know? Those, those typical horror films the, that once in a while. At least at the right time. Yeah. Right circumstances. Yeah. And but uh, we also we enjoyed Don't Breathe. Yes. Lots of twists yeah, in it. it was good. And uh, the people you thought you, like you hated everybody in the movie. <laughs> They're they, all bad guys. And they stayed true with that. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Okay. Hold that thought. Let's do the plot, and then I want to get right back to that thought. All right. Okay. The plot in this one is... Did you see the first one? Pretty much the same thing. Except, except. Except this time, Stephen Lang's character is protecting the young girl from the intruders. And the intr there is a twist. We, we, let's not go into that whole part. But there's a reason the intruders are there, and they're there for the little girl. A specific reason why they've chosen that house. Yeah. And there's a couple twists there. At first you think they want her for this reason, and then, oh, no they don't. And then, yes they do, yeah, <laughs> kind of yeah. thing. Back to your point, go ahead. Okay, so you say, remember the first movie, it's the same plot? Actually, no, because in the first movie, you have thieving kids, mm -hmm. and they go in, and they're uh, assaulted by this man who overpowers them, right. even though he's blind. And now you have but, thieving adults. But even though, they're thieving kids and bad guys. They're kids. Mm -hmm. And you, the girl's a thief, but you know she's doing it to protect her either daughter or little sister. The boy is along for it. He doesn't, he does not want to do this job, but he has to for love. Okay. You actually feel something for these kids. Sure. Now in this one, the intruders are complete scumbag bad guys. Yeah. And the guy we know from the first movie, uh, Stephen Lang's character, He's a complete scumbag bad guy. So I have no feelings for anybody. <laughs> Except they try and make Stephen Lang's character not a scumbag. Actually, the only person that I was like, wow, I really, I like that character. I could get on, she's the first one to die. Is is the, the driver. Yeah. Well, so now you're left rooting for this little girl. And you think, okay, well, Stephen Lang's character is kind of training her Mm -hmm. to be a badass okay to, to survive yeah. yeah and so when these intruders come you think we're gonna go nasty home alone on their right that's behinds. what i was thinking yeah but no <clears throat> she's nothing she doesn't do anything she runs and she hides and she gets caught and nothing. they they needed to improve on that big time like she didn't do she hid it in a what uh, in a, like a file cabinet or something and almost dies. And almost dies. So I'm thinking, I don't care about anybody. Nobody in this entire thing is interesting. All we're doing is watching Stephen Lang's character get hurt and persevere and kick butt. Yeah. So it's like Rambo. Yeah. Yeah. This was not Don't Breathe 2. This but it was, was a different movie with one same character. But it was like a, a bad Rambo because he didn't do a lot of preparing. I mean, all of his preparing for, like, to hurt these guys was... I'm gonna grab a can of gas. Like that's he did that what four times in the movie. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not. He doesn't suit up. <laughs> he's not that kind of character. He's not suiting up to go to battle in this movie. No, but once he realizes there are intruders, because when he's with his dog, he realizes there's intruders in the house. Then you see him get this look on his face. Yeah. And he goes into battle. And you yeah. think it's gonna go down? Except remember, at this point in the last one, he was protecting a secret in the basement. And that's why he decided to kill these kids who broke into his house. So his secret is not let out. Because he's he was going a little psycho, right? In that situation. The turkey baster stuff and all that. 
Well, he had that going on, but he also had a lot of money in the house, and it was his house. Yeah. Yeah, but the money was never taken. They tried to take it. Yeah, but he his his wasn't so much the money; it was the secret. Okay, he didn't want that to get out. That was the big twist and everything of the first. Do you movie. wish he wasn't also stone faced in this movie? <laughs> listen, listen. What I'm trying to say is, in this movie, he's trying to raise the girl and protect her just from the outside world. He's not. He's not in <clears throat> battle mode anymore. No. He's in father mode. Okay, he's you have he's to tie trying in, to be that person. You have to tie in the first movie with his relationship yes, it's, with it's the little eight girl. eight years later. It's eight years later. But the entire reason for the basement scene and the turkey baster scene and everything else in the first movie was because he had lost his daughter yes. to, a, to a drunk driving car accident. The girl in the basement. Yeah. And so he, the whole, his whole motivation is to have a child. Is to yes. replace his daughter, not replace, but is to be a father. Yes. That's the whole motivation for him. So okay. that's why he's protecting her. Yes, but he's not, he hasn't set up the home as a bunker defense. He's just set it up to, she, he's homeschooling her. He's letting her go to the town. He's doing, he's trying to be a father. He's not the evil, evil guy that, that at least that's what they're trying to let us know. That's why I'm saying he, he doesn't have 50 guns all over the place. He hasn't barbed wired the, the house. He hasn't booby trapped anything. So when he goes to battle, it's just him and his hands, and that's all he has. Yeah. Which we know is sufficient because of the first movie. Except mm -hmm. he's also eight years older. <laughs> yeah, and you can see it. Yeah. You can see it. He's a lot, he's not like, he's not Stephen Lang from uh, Avatar. In this movie, he's not the big, huge no, bulk no. guy. He's an older bulk guy <laughs> who these guys are bigger than. That's the same guy? That's Stephen yeah. Lang. He's the evil guy in Avatar. Ooh. You didn't know that? No. <laughs> That's what he's best known from. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it, like I was okay with it, but I mean, here's the trouble with this movie is, other than the little girl, there's really nobody in this movie to cheer for. Zero. Zero people uh, other, to cheer other, for. Other than the, the woman who dies at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Well, and this, and the dog. Yeah. I guess the dog. I enjoyed the dogs. Right. <laughs> good, good dog scene. <laughs> good acting for the dogs. Um, no, but I, and I think that's what they were going for. They wanted a movie where everyone's the bad guy. Yeah. Well, they and, Because I think that's, that's where they, they hit fire in the first movie. Well, no, because I felt something for the kids who went in. But they were not good, like, they were bad guys. No, they were doing bad things, but they were kids. You know? They're still bad people. They weren't going to shoot him. Remember at the beginning? They just wanted to get away. They weren't going to really shoot him. I know. So you could at least have <clears throat> These guys just wanted to torture him when they got a hold of him. Like, the first movie, you can say, was a sp suspense thriller. Yeah. This one was an action... This one was more like Saw. I don't know. I never saw any Saw. But, I mean, it's, it's like the... Let's, it's like, uh, let's show really graphic deaths. Yeah. Like yeah. shovels straight into the face a couple times, pushing eyeballs out, all that kind of stuff. That's what this movie turned into. And it, it was nowhere near as, they tried to make it suspenseful with the filling of the water. Well, they're, and, they're uh, trying to one up the first movie. Yeah, yes. but uh, it's hard to do that when you, your ultimate good guy in this movie is a scumbag from before. You can't just magically, oh look, he's a father now. Because you remember the first movie. Well, I thought that's what you were trying to tell us earlier. No. <laughs> that it was okay. No, this he's is a good I'm guy now. This is what they're trying to portray. But but you did notice that he had that monologue in the movie sa at, the, at the end saying that I was, I'm this and I'm that and I'm such a bad guy and you shouldn't be near me. He's, he's, Trying, trying to yeah. make amends and he's, yeah. you know, he's remorseful. And you've already saved me. Yes, you have. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, obviously, I don't think we were hugely impressed by the sequel to this movie. What would you give it? Five. Yeah, five and a half. It was it was long. It was drawn out. I'd say five, five and a half. Uh, for me, there was really no suspense, which is what this movie needed. At no point in this movie did I think the little girl was going to die, and that's a problem in this movie because hmm. so, that's the only character you're supposed to care about. In fact, it was so predictable that I had predicted where she is going to end up at the end of the movie. Well, yeah, it was easy. They, yeah. they foreshadowed that 55 times <laughs> yeah. in the movie. I was I like, uh, wonder if she's going to end up That's pretty there. predictable. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll give it a five. It was a so-so movie. Uh, I would wait 
I would wait and watch this one at home. And even then, if you miss it, don't worry about it. It's, it, it's it, not a bad movie to watch. Like, you would watch this before you watch Woman in the Window. And, oh, yeah. And, and those other streaming movies. This one was okay to watch at home. Don't pay for it extra, you know? Yeah. But it wasn't as good as the first one. You don't have to rush to the theaters. No. Oh, absolutely. This and is, this is not though, a must-see in the theaters. Because I was excited to see this one. Yeah. Like I was, that's, this is the one that I wanted to see. Yeah, Mark doesn't usually get to the movies with us. No. And usually. he made a special point to go see this one. And I bet you he's really happy he did. <laughs> well, you paid. <laughs> well, there you go. Let us know. Don't Breathe too. Have you seen it? It's been out a, about a week now. Let us know in the comments down below. Are you looking forward to seeing it? Did you see it? Just what did you think? It's no Back to the Future. It it's, is no Back to the Future. I don't even think it's a protege. And until next time, we'll see you on the channel.